on his part, man. Flying low. Just ripping along the top of the weeds. Coolest thing ever. But if you're gonna fly low, the uh, you gotta have the skills to be able to react instantly to what's going on, as well as a glider that is ridiculously stable and safe. Because you cannot be dinking around near the ground. There's a video where a guy in a Blackhawk wing takes a collapse like 15 feet off the ground and he hits face first going the opposite direction. It literally flipped a complete 180 and he hit a face first going the opposite way. In only 15 feet, the glider flipped a complete backflip 180 face first into the ground. So you watch all the collapse testing and the testing of the Dominator and the years of experience and it's just a completely different world. You take a major collapse on a Dominator and you generally just keep on flying and it just pops right back out instantly. It's kind of ridiculous, but it's easy to make a glider safe. There's other good safe gliders. I mean, they might not be as good as the Dominator, but there's other good safe gliders. The problem is, is the safe gliders generally suck so bad you would rather sacrifice safety than fly that crap. <laughs> Where the Dominator not only has the best safety, but it also has the absolute best performance. So you got handling on par with an acro glider, glide ratio of an XC wing, and you got the speed that, well, I set the world speed record 51 miles an hour. So you get all of the benefits in the same wing. It's very simple to make a safe glider if it doesn't handle for crap and doesn't glide and doesn't do anything else. So it's all about getting the overall characteristics. So often people think, oh yeah, you got flying A. Well, it's not about flying an A or flying a DHV-1 or AFCOR standard. It's about the overall characteristics because having the safety is not enough. Because the problem is, is you're not safe. Because within three to six months, you're gonna get so sick of that big piece of crap ozone that you're gonna dump it and buy a Dominator anyway. So it's like, why the heck would you buy a total big piece of crap that you're going to get rid of in three to six months so that you can get a real glider? It's just, there's no reason to. You get a Dominator and it's a Dominator. When you come back a year later and you say, hey, I want the next best thing. And we go, well, you got it. It's a freaking Dominator. <laughs> the, only, the only difficult choice with a Dominator is which size to fly. The, uh, it's all about picking the characteristics that you got all the best characteristics in a single glider. The Dominator is a freaking shiznitz, which is why I have no fl problem flying in the middle of the day. You know what, am I three feet off the ground? Right next to some ruts and stuff. The Dominator is just insanely stable. And then add to that active piloting skill that comes through super training. The only school in the world teaching actual skills. I mean, it sounds weird to say, there's only one school in the world teaching actual skills. Try me, prove me wrong. Show me a video of anyone else's students kiting up a pole or kiting on a, you know, up a wall or just reverse kiting no hands or knocking out 530 touch and goes in a 10 day class and dropping glider sizes from an extra large all the way to an extra, 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 extra small. It just, skills are skills, there's no opinion to it. So you add super skills that come only through super training. The, uh, and then you've got the best and safest and the best performance glider. Then you can go out and fly and have fun and not be scared to death of every little thermal and turbulence and oh my gosh, what if I get hit with high winds, blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm on an extra, extra small Dominator. I set the world speed record at 51 miles an hour on this wing. What do I give a crap about 30, 35 mile an hour gusts? From? I've been through like eight of them. <laughs> it's a non-issue. Look how I'm getting bounced around in this midday thermic activity, but total no problemo. Keep the glider loaded, which is easier said than done because they don't teach that other classes. It takes about 25 to 60 hours to really get to where 
you can sit there and hold a conversation and your hands are just constantly moving, perfectly controlling the, you know, the loading and altitude and direction of the glider while you're doing it. So, and it, it's not practice that makes perfect. Lots of people say, oh yeah, we kite a ton. And it's not the kiting that does it. It's about learning the correct technique and then practicing that into reflexes. If you practice wrong for 30 years, you're still gonna suck as bad as most of the people out there acting as instructors. Seriously, show me an instructor out there, literally who's been doing it 20 years, who could just do what brand new super students can do. I mean, they get all freaked out, cuss and swear, and tell every lie, and make up stories about me buying up shelter dogs and fighting them to the death, and lies about kicking owls and pulling guns on fathers and children. Literally every lie they can spread around because they can't actually show a video of skills. If they had the skills, they would just show the skills. No need to make up lies. If they were training people to have skills, they would just show the skill of their students. It's not rocket science. It shouldn't be that hard. You shouldn't have to tell 5,000 lies about Superdell to get people to buy from you. It should be as simple as showing that your students have more skill than my students. Because only a fool is going to train with someone who's not producing the skills. Uh, duh. It's, it, it's really simple logic. But sadly, in this day and age, there's a lot of people that do not have logic and reason and rational thought process. They just don't think that way and so it doesn't matter what the facts are they're still gonna go train with people who don't even have the most basic skills or think they train it's a complete nightmare so you're gonna have the carnage and death all the time constantly because of those types of people and it's basically 99.999 percent of the injuries and death out there is just sheer stupidity so for people that think a little bit smarter and brighter and are a little bit sharper and more coordinated, you know, you just gotta use a little bit of brain power and train with the guy who actually has the skills and is teaching those skills to students over and over, video after video. You know, if you're gonna go train with someone, you dang well better go look at a video of the skill level of their students. If they don't have any, there is a serious problem. That's like trying to sell a car and not send you any pictures. Hello? Not even let you test drive it. It's vaporware. There's a reason they don't let you see it or touch it or drive it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's basic, you know, logic 101. If somebody has something real to sell, they want to show you what they have and so you can see confidently that you're getting what you're paying for. So same thing with paramotor training. Lots of people out there pretending they're gonna train you. Oh yeah, we got a paramotor school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, show me the video. Where's the video of your students doing what super students can do? I can see super students demonstrating skills all over YouTube, everywhere. <laughs> but where are your students? Reverse kiting no hands or kiting up a wall or knocking out hundreds of touch and goes or progressing from an extra large clear down to an extra, extra, extra small in only 10 days or literally making tandem instructor level by the end of the 10 days. Let's see them take your girlfriend tandem. Would you let your student take your girlfriend tandem after just 10 days of your training? Heck no. <laughs> If it ain't super training, they sure won't. Or they're trying to kill somebody. Totally insane. So it, it, it just, it's about cutting the BS and looking at the skills. Because this literally is the funnest and one of the most ridiculously safe sports you can do if you simply get real gear and training. Real gear meaning a flat top paramotor specifically. It's the only one that has the 304 updates that you can read about in detail one at a time. And you get yourself a Dominator and you get Super Train. It, it is what it is. Then it's just a whole different experience. You're not scared to death, you know, and you're not lied to trying to pretend, oh yeah, we only fly in perfectly smooth air. Really, you control the weather? The weather never changes? <laughs> 
I mean, if you fell for the BS about only flying in perfectly smooth conditions, uh, you probably do not have the intelligence level for aviation. I'm sorry, but it, you know, it's not. This is not a sport for people who are easily offended. It's for people that are logical and rational and appreciate confident, dominant personalities because that's what it takes to survive in aviation. It is not a sport for pansies who are emotionally weak. They get their shorts in a bind and get all offended because someone told the truth and showed a video backing it up. It should be a very simple matter. Logic versus logic, fact versus fact. Show the video, either you got the skills or you don't. Amen. <laughs> okay. Let's go fly it, cause it's the coolest thing ever!